Welcome to this podcast on small bowel obstruction. As I'm sure most of you guys know, uh, the definition of a small bowel obstruction is a mechanical obstruction to the passage of contents of the small intestine through the small intestine. And the three most common etiologies are adhesions, usually due to prior surgery, but it can be due to other processes such as uh, prior radiation therapy. Uh, hernias are the second most common cause of a small bowel obstruction, and you can have masses calling, causing small bowel obstructions also. What we're going to do is talk about the radiography of small bowel obstructions, and we'll spend a little bit of time talking about some of the pitfalls involved, and we're going to spend about half of our time talking about plain films, and we're also going to talk about CT imaging of small bowel obstructions. On the left is a normal radiograph of the abdomen. And I want you to notice a couple of things. You can see the stomach there in the left upper quadrant of the abdomen. That's an okay amount of air and fluid within the uh, stomach. Most of the air in the uh, uh, bowel distal to the stomach is within the colon in this uh, individual. And you can recognize that by the position of the air. You can see that you have some air there located peripherally in the right lower quadrant and peripherally along the left side of the abdomen. That's air in the ascending and the descending colon. And if we remember our anatomy, if you look at the uh, image there on the right on the top, you can see that the ascending and the descending colons, that those are uh, located peripherally. You can also uh, see that uh, the ascending and the descending colons have to be connected by something, and that obviously is the transverse colon, which has uh, been uh, removed from the uh, image there on the upper right. But you can see gas within the transverse uh, colon going from uh, the right side of the uh, bowel to the left side of the large bowel. So most of the air here is in the large bowel. This is a normal uh, bowel gas pattern here, very very small amount of air within the, uh, within the small bowel. So you can distinguish between large bowel and small bowel uh, potentially by the location of the air. The other way that you can distinguish between air and small bowel and air and large bowel is to look to see uh, what the folds of the uh, bowel are doing. In the case of small bowel, illustrated by the uh, uh, schematic uh, just below the, uh, um, the image from Gray's Anatomy, that's what the small bowel looks like. In small bowel, the, uh, the folds of the bowel go all the way across the bowel, whereas with large bowel, the large bowel folds do not go all the way across the uh, uh, do not go all the way across the bowel. So that's another way of being able to tell small bowel from large bowel. So let's look at a couple of examples. This is an example of a small bowel obstruction. The arrow there indicates markedly dilated small bowel. Usually the bowel, small bowel is about two and a half to three centimeters in diameter. And you can see that this uh, bowel here is markedly distended. You can recognize this as small bowel because of its central location and because of the fact that you've got folds going all the way across the bowel. You can see that I've uh, circled there with the, uh, uh, with the red uh, uh, dots air within the uh, within the pelvis. And this is air that's within the rectum. So if you have a little air within the uh, small, uh, I'm sorry, within the large bowel in the presence of dilated small bowel, think about a couple of things. One, you could have a partial or an early small bowel obstruction. And it's also possible that uh, there may have been prior instrumentation or a digital exam that was done on the uh, rectum and that introduced some air uh, uh, because of that. Another example of markedly dilated small bowel. Again, this uh, air is uh, the air in the small bowel is causing distension greater than two and a half to three centimeters in uh, diameter of the uh, small bowel. You can see that there are markings that are crossing uh, completely across the bowel, indicating this is small bowel, and you can also recognize a central location. Again, there is some air within the uh, uh, within the distal uh, colon, probably within the rectum, and we talked about some possible etiologies for air in this in this region. Now those are two gross examples of small bowel obstruction. A lot of times it's much more difficult to make the diagnosis. This individual here has a small bowel obstruction also. On the left is a supine image and on the right is an upright image of the uh, bowel. You can see in this case that the patient does have a, a small bowel obstruction. It's at least a partial obstruction. You can see some uh, uh, air and feces within the colon projecting over the left iliac wing, but the small bowel here is dilated. It's greater than two and a half to three centimeters in diameter. And you can recognize that this is small bowel because, uh, because the uh, markings of the bowel go all the way across the uh, bowel, the small bowel folds. Now, 
This is more difficult to recognize in terms of being a small bowel obstruction compared to the previous two cases we looked at. In the previous two cases, we had very little uh, fluid within the bowel. We had nothing but air in the bowel. It was very easy for us to recognize gas-filled, uh, distended small bowel. But when you start to get fluid in, in the small bowel, it becomes very uh, difficult or it can become even impossible to recognize that the small bowel is distended. So on the image on the right, that confirms to us that there's lots of fluid within the uh, small bowel. We see these scattered air fluid levels, and that tells us that there's something abnormal. And in the presence of distension of the small bowel, as we can see on the supine image, we, could, we should suspect that this person has a small bowel obstruction. The other reason for getting an upright radiograph is to look for one of the complications of a small bowel obstruction. And here we have an individual who has some free intraperitoneal air. You can see that uh, the arrows indicate air between the liver and the diaphragm. So we know that there's uh, some free intraperitoneal air in this particular uh, individual. Let's go ahead and move on and talk about the CT evaluation of small bowel obstruction. We just got finished talking about how if uh, you had a patient whose bowel was filled with fluid, it would be very difficult on a plane radiograph to be confident that you were dealing with a small bowel obstruction or to confidently rule out a small bowel obstruction. So a lot of times if you have a strong clinical suspicion that someone has a small bowel obstruction and the plane radiographs are not helpful, you should uh, consider going on and getting a, a CT scan. Now most of the time these CT scans will be done with uh, oral contrast uh, material to better evaluate a transition point between normal bowel and abnormal distended bowel so you can figure out where your level of obstruction is. In this particular example, uh, oral contrast wasn't given but you can see that you can still make the diagnosis of a small bowel obstruction and you can uh, identify the transition point. So the dilated small bowel is indicated by the green arrows the blue arrow there indicates the area of obstruction in the uh, right lower quadrant. You can see that there's a transition point there between distended bowel and non-distended bowel. In this case, the small bowel obstruction was due to an adhesion, which is the most common cause of a small bowel obstruction. This is an example of a small bowel obstruction due to a mass. On the left image there, the arrow is pointing at markedly dilated small bowel. And you know that that's small bowel because of, the, because of the location. Remember, the colon is going to be located more peripherally. And you can see the transverse uh, colon filled with air. That's that black material uh, anterior to the, uh, uh, to the dilated uh, small bowel. On the uh, image on the right, the blue arrow points to the transition point. That's an area there of markedly narrowed uh, small uh, bowel and the uh, uh, orange arrow points to more normally uh, or small bowel of a more normal uh, character uh, caliber rather. The blue uh, area, arrow there pointing to the uh, small bowel, that uh, uh, small bowel is narrowed because you've got a big mass. You can see that there's a large mass there anterior to that narrowed uh, small bowel, in this case due to uh, due, due lymphoma. So this is an example of a small bowel obstruction due to a mass due to um, uh, lymphoma. Another example of a small bowel obstruction uh, diagnosed and characterized by a CT, in this case due to a hernia. On the image on the left, the green arrows point to dilated small bowel. You can even see a fold sort of going all the way across the, uh, small, uh, the, the dilated small, bar small uh, bowel uh, there in the, uh, um, indicated by the lowermost green arrow. The orange arrow indicates a ventral hernia. And as you can see on the image on the right, the blue arrow points to the uh, uh, bowel that's distal to that uh, hernia that is decompressed, that is normal in, ca in caliber. So you can diagnose this uh, patient's uh, uh, small bowel obstruction. You can show why the uh, uh, patient has a small bowel obstruction, and you can indicate the uh, transition point. Now, in addition to perforation, another potential complication of a small bowel obstruction is ischemia. And this person got intravenous uh, contrast material. And you can see there anteriorly, there's some loops of dilated small bowel indicated by the green arrow and indicated by the uh, blue arrow. The loops of bowel there indicated by the blue arrow, you can see that there's enhancement of the peripheral aspects of, of the uh, bowel, whereas the uh, loop of bowel indicated by the green arrow, it doesn't have any 
doesn't have any enhancement. And the reason that it's not being enhanced is because the blood supply to that uh, loop of bowel was poor because of the ischemia caused by the small bowel obstruction. So this indicates one of the potential uh, complications of a small bowel obstruction, ischemia, and of course that might lead to rupture, which of course would be a, uh, um, a, a bad problem. Okay, one of the pitfalls, uh, one of the other pitfalls of diagnosing a small bowel obstruction is an ileus, and an ileus is basically uh, defined as the disrupt, dis disruption excuse me, of the normal propulsive or the peristaltic activity of the small bowel due to some sort of non-mechanical cause. And there's lots and lots of potential etiologies. Uh, recent GI surgery, uh, electrolyte uh, problems, hypothyroidism, certain uh, medications, for example uh, opiates, morphine, you can have severe illness and spinal cord injury give you that uh, also. So basically what happens with an ileus is that you have dilatation both of large bowel and of small bowel. And this is an example right here. I've indicated the dilated colon and I've got an arrow there pointed, pointing to the uh, small uh, bowel that's uh, dilated. What you need to do if you have a patient that you think has an ileus, uh, you might um, want to consider if, um, if, if the uh, clinical situation is confusing doing a CT scan because potentially you could have a very distal large bowel obstruction look like an ileus but of course your physical exam might help if you have hypoactive bowel so sounds and if you have the appropriate clinical uh, setting um, you need to think about an ileus as opposed to a distal large bowel obstruction but if if it's confusing you could get a CT scan and you could look at the uh, uh, distal uh, large bowel to see whether it's normal or abnormal. That concludes our discussion of small bowel obstruction.